to Ulsan, South Korea for the 45th World Outdoor Archery Championships, a veritable festival for archers competing from over 80 countries. This is the most historical of all archery championships. This event was first held in Poland in 1931. Our hosts, however, did not appear on the championship circuit until the 30th Berlin World Championships in 1979. So sit back and enjoy archery at its very best from the homeland of archery champions. So the first match of the day, the team compound bronze match for women, 153-168, Mexico trailing behind the United States. Mexico the number three seed in qualification and number five seed Mexico. Joining me in the commentator's booth, Juan Carlos Holgado, FITA event director and Olympic champion from 1992. Juan Carlos, a few words about this Mexican team. Mexico has progressed very, very strong in the last year, but the favorite was supposed to be United States. Uh, United States and compound male and females as the strongest country in the world. And the match could see that they, they were really ready to win. And just a few words about the uh, Ochoa Mexico dynasty there. There's, there's a family totally dedicated to archery with uh, Ruben, with Almendra, and uh, it's, it seems that they, they exchange the knowledge and they get better and better event after the event. The scores began with Mexico scoring 51 in the first end, USA 53, 52 Mexico in the second, 56 USA in the third, 50 to 59, and the lead was stretching. In the final end, even though it evened out 55-55, USA took the match 223 to 208. Match number two and the team compound men match, Finland versus El Salvador. It's not every day we get to see Finland in a match. This has been a good surprise in this event. We have not seen Finland in a final, I think, since many, many years and less in compound. They have built a good team and they have been the surprise of this competition in men compound. El Salvador have a great team many years ago. They disappeared as a team, but the, the strong archer like uh, Jorge Jimenez, he has been building the team during the years and they have really come with a strong, strong team to compete to this final. Nine. One arrow left to go. The seven will take it. And that's the second nine, 224-221. I suppose no great surprise then, El Salvador taking the uh, bronze medal. They have much more experience and Jorge is a big difference uh, as he has been performing very well in the last two competitions. But I have to say that the other two archers were also very confident and as I say, the, the three of them together, they were really good and very strong as a team. Ladies now in the compound women's team match, gold medal match, Korea versus Russia, 156-159, with the last end to play, Korea shooting first. Juan Carlos, it's uh, never an easy match playing Korea. Never, but uh, Korea was not supposed to be so strong in compound. Uh, we could see them coming, but uh, not as strong as they were here. So Korea has uh, built a very good uh, compound team, and we could see that arriving in this final, they were ready to win. In fact, they were leading most of the time until they make a, a mistake of an experienced mistake. What would you explain is the delay for them joining the compound competition? Korea was uh, very, very focused since many years in the Olympic style and, and compound was not their main focus. But since uh, Daigo, the Universidad in 2003, where they have to build a team for, for this Universidad, they start to introduce in compound archery. And right now they have a, a more or less a professional status of the, of the archer that make them train hard and train daily and get to the level the, to arrive to this kind of finals. Even so? The Russian Federation take the bronze medal match 215 to 209. Russia has much more experience. They have a strong team competing since three or four years in the World Cup and World Championship. They have Albina as a strong archer of the, of the team. So it's not a surprise that uh, Russia won the match, uh, despite the fact that the uh, Korean was shooting really good and has a, has a good level. be the sentiment for this next match compound men's team gold medal match United States versus the Russian Federation
Scores 202 to 199. Not a lot to choose between them in this final end. Russia is the first time they arrive in, in a final and is the inexperienced team in this uh, in this match. And United States has been in many finals. The three archers together are three of the best archers in the world. And it's not a surprise that the United States is the favorite and, and is getting the lead. But Russia really put a, a good fight and make them make the American to, to, sh to shoot fast and shoot strong to try to get this advantage. Americans qualified with 4-1-7-9, almost 50 points higher than the closest runner-up, Russia, who shot with 4-1-30. I, I say this is the strongest team we had in Leipzig in main compound, and they were the favorite, and they proved that they are in a different level than all the others. Rio Wine is in a great moment. Dave Cozen is always one of our top, and Brad Galantin, the new, the new uh, archer in the circuit since two years, is in the top level. So the three together are unbeatable right now. So an emphatic win for the United States, 232 to 223 from the Russian Federation. Excellent performance, great shooting. I come out here with two guys that I know are true professionals, and we're just going to go out there and get the job done. You never have to worry about what they're going to do, and it almost puts you at ease. You don't have to worry about what you're going to do. Because I'm taking the field with two guys that are shooting absolutely phenomenal right now outdoors. Two of the best in the world. So to go out there and shoot a team round with these guys, it's nothing to worry about. USA! 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 Red <laughs> On to Recurve now and the women's team bronze medal match Belarus versus the Russian Federation. 173 to 184, the Russians leading. It has been a great surprise to see Belarus as we have not seen them in, in many years, uh, several years in the, in the finals. They have a young team and they came very strong to this uh, bronze medal match. But Russian has built a young team with experience as well. So uh, the, the match was uh, clearly for Russia, but they make, start making strange uh, shots like we have seen now. They were not consistent in the center and it was an uncertain match until the last arrow. Looking at the scores, it appears to have been uh, difficult for both in the first end. Uh, Belarus shooting 43 and Russia shooting just 46, so the scoring has been affected by the wind, I suggest. Yes, uh, the, the conditions were not as stable as in other matches, it was a bit windy, but as I said also, they were nervous both teams and they were not consistent in the yellow. Belarus 199 and the Russian Federation finishing on 204. Another excellent day's shooting for the Russian team. Russian has a good championship here, winning several medals and has been the team, the most successful team with Korea. So this is a pleasant surprise in the team men recurve bronze match. We find Japan shooting against China, 186-184. A little bit about the uh, Japanese team, Juan Carlos. Japan has uh, our star Hiroshi Yamamoto, uh, a very experienced archer who has uh, two young kids uh, around him. and He, he was the, the experience of the team and the kids were the talent. So really Japan was a good surprise in this uh, final. And China has changed the team since the Olympic Games and they are building a new team focused on London 2012. So even China is one of the strongest team in our circuit. It's a young and experienced and that's allowed the Japan to, to take the advantage of, of Hiroshi and his experience. The final score not really telling the whole story. 214 to Japan, 212 to China. But taking a look at the, uh, the ends, at the end of uh, N3, Japan shooting five points clear of China and in the final end, three points clear of China. Finishing 214-212, an excellent win for Japan. We see uh, the happiness of Hiroshi Yamamoto because he never won a medal in a world championship. So he really d wanted it and I think he deserved it after his long career. And what's good enough for the men is good enough for the women. Here we see Japan pitching against Korea in the recurve women's team match. 196-182, Japan trailing. Japan was also a surprise in this recurve women final because we could uh, see other teams like Russia, Ukraine here, but never Japan. And uh, that's proof that Japan is doing a, a good work, but we don't see them too often in the World Cup and we cannot see them coming before. Korean women, winners from Leipzig in 2007 and the 2008 Olympic team champions also placed first this year at the World Cup events in Antalya and Shanghai. Unfortunately, this match has not too much history because the lead of the Korean team was so big that nobody could expect that Japan was coming back. So Korean were the favorite and they proved it 
because individually they are much better than the Koreans. Before the match, Korea seeded first and uh, Japan seeded 14th. But not a bad score for the Japanese team there. 224 from Korea, 209 from Japan. To beat the Korean, you have to shoot uh, at the maximum level, and Japan didn't do it in this final. They did it before to arrive to the medal matches, but not in this final. And it's clear that the psychological part is very difficult to beat the Korean when you are not convinced you can do it. Now for some European flair. France versus the hosts Korea in the gold medal recurve men's team match. Final featuring the leaders and run-up from qualifications. It's very good and very nice to see the France team performing so well. We have not seen them since a while and uh, they have done a great competition and uh, was another surprise of this of this event as we have seen we have several surprises. They perform excellent and they they really make a big fight against Korea. Just two points separating these uh, two teams at the beginning of, uh, of this end. Korea on 167 and France on 165. For me, it has been the most exciting uh, match of the championship. It has been, until the last arrow, very tight. And uh, Korea proved that when they are under stress and under pressure, they, they do the best. Finishing with three tens is something that is not easy to do, especially in your host country, when the pressure that everybody expects you to win. And looking at the scores, it's as simple as that. The final three arrows, 10-10-10 for Korea and 9-9-9 for France. So bad luck to the French team. But this, this match proved to all around the world, uh, all the archers, that Korean are human and can be beaten. They were afraid under the last arrow, and that's what they mentioned in most of this interview. The men recurve team is also under pressure because in Korea, just the women bring the medals. The men never bring so many medals as the women, so they really wanted to prove that they are as good as the women. <laughs> and staying with that European flavor, it's the turn of Italy and Denmark now with Laura Longo from Italy and Camilla Soimod from Denmark. The World Cup finalist in Copenhagen, Soimod, has still something to shoot for today, a bronze medal. However, she had to face Laura in the final, and that's not an easy challenge. It is not. Uh, Camilla uh, felt uh, more confident. She, think, she thought that she was stronger, but Longo is a, is a new young archer. She's very talented, has become very strong in the last two events, and she came to this uh, final in a very strong confidence and believing in her, in her form. One commentator mentioning that her shooting style is very similar to her teammate Sergio Pani. Uh, Sergio, of course, has a great influence in all the Italian archer. He is one of our top. He has been in many finals, the most regular compound archer in our World Cup. So I'm sure that uh, most of the compound archer in Italy follow, follow his style and his form of shooting. Laura taking it then 118 to 113. And that takes us straight on to the individual compound men's match. Stephen Clifton from New Zealand versus Jose Duo from Spain. Jose Duo is the second time he finds himself in this situation in Leipzig in the last World Championship. He was also shooting for this bronze medal match and unfortunately he lost. So he has a personal challenge here going in the same situation and see if he can get it this time. It's also very good to see an archer from New Zealand and in this championship we have medalists from the five continents so we are really Happy to see that Archer is growing worldwide. End of the second end, uh, there was only two points in it uh, with Duo leading, but uh, Clifton shooting well in the third end, leveled things up at 87 apiece. So I, I believe that Jose Duo has to wait for the next World Championship to see if he can get it. He was really disappointed, though. he thought he could do it this time, but uh, he has to try in, in a third occasion to see if he get the medal. And it's all in the details. Despite shooting eight tens, he did manage to shoot two eights, and his component didn't shoot any. That takes us on to the individual compound women gold match. Horino Koizzi from South Africa and Albina Loginova from Russia. 78-87, Loginova in the lead, shooting her 10th arrow. Jorina, with 17 years old, was a fantastic surprise for this uh, competition. She performed very well two months ago in the Youth World Championship and we could see it coming, but seeing that senior shooting for the gold medal match was a really good surprise. Albina has much more experience. She was second already in Leipzig in the World Championship and she was performing well since then. 
So she was really the favourite to win this gold. Looking over already with a seven point advantage on the board at the end of the second end, having 59 against 52. So the writing on the wall already early on in the match. The, the start of uh, Jorina was uh, a bit nervous. She was not uh, as accurate as she should be in the final. And this was the advantage that Arvina took to win the match from the first arrows. 116 then to 106. 10 point difference between these two archers. Congratulations then to Albina. Uh, congratulations to Albina and for sure uh, Jorina has learned the lesson and for next final she will get more relaxed. It's very difficult to be in this kind of final performing as you will be training or in a, in a previous elimination match. The final against Albina, you have to say really good and with 17 years old this is not easy to achieve. You can see how happy she is after the second place in Leipzig, now she got the gold. I am very happy. Last time I was in good shape and dreamed about being a world champion, but this time I had everything I could have dreamed about. I am really happy now. The individual compound men gold match now. Rio Wild from the USA and Liam Greenwood from Great Britain. 88 to 85 Rio Wild with three point advantage after nine arrows. Three to go. Three points could look like it's not a big advantage, but in compound and in this level is really a big advantage. Rio has been shooting very solid, very strong all the championship and he was a clear favorite since the beginning. At the end of the first end, it was even Stevens, and it took the end of the second end for Rio Wild to break open the advantage. Rio was grouping amazing. He has grouped like uh, three, four centimeters, the three arrows, and Greenwood was not grouping so good, and that was a little bit the advantage that Rio took from the beginning. What an impressive uh, final end for Greenwood. He, he came back clearly after the first uh, arrow, but was already too much to come back and, and beat the, the favorite and the strong real wide. Nerves are still there in the final end of the individual compound men's match. Both archers shooting perfect ends. 10, 10, 10, 10. Look at that, end four, 30 apiece, 118 to 116. Yeah, Rio won, won the gold medal 12 years after his father did. So it's uh, something that he has in mind and he was talking to all of us that his father was a great inspiration for this championship because he wanted to offer this to him. Excellent performance from the, the Wild family there. It's amazing. I mean, uh, a lot of hard work has gone into this year and it's been a great year and just a great way to end the year. It just tops it off with everything I could ask for. On to the recurve women's individual match bronze medal. Karina Lipiaska from Poland and Natalia Sanchez from Colombia, 77 playing 78 Sanchez having the lead. Seeing a Polish archer in, in a medal match is not a surprise. They have a, a strong female team. But seeing Natalia from Colombia in, in a medal match is really a good surprise and proved that uh, they have done a good job. They hired a Korean coach some years ago and it can see, we can see clearly that the level has improved to a worldwide level. So Natalia has a lot of experience and, and it's clearly shown that she can manage this, this match a bit better than that Lady Aska. Sanchez showing her experience with some very consistent scoring, whereas Lipiaska's scores fluctuated throughout the match. 99 points to Karina and a fantastic 105 to Natalia Sanchez from Colombia. Let's just take a look at those scores there at the ends. End one, 26, 23, 28 and 22 for Karina. A little bit all over the place. Straight on then with the individual recurve men's bronze match. Oh Yin Hayek from Korea shooting against Viktor Ruben from the Ukraine. We have Viktor Ruben, our Olympic champion, who has performed very well in elimination. Uh, in the ranking round, he, he ranked 11th, but he was going better and better in all the elimination. And then we have all that he did the world record in the qualification round with 1,386, an amazing score. So he was one of the favorites, but he didn't perform so well in the eliminations. Oh, uh, affected uh, quite uh, considerably in the second end by the wind, scoring 10-7-10, uh, while Ruben managed to come back with 9-10-10. 
The Ukraine leading 57-56 at the end of the second there. End of the third, both archers with the same score. And there's one point in it for Viktor Ruben to, uh, to take the medal. Congratulations to him. We can see that Victor is not celebrating because there was one arrow that was not clear, it was at 10.09. As soon as they confirm, you can see the face of Victor much more happy. <laughs> so there we have it, 111 to 110. 27 in N2 for the Korean was probably the defining moment. Staying with the individual rounds then, recurve women gold match, Quack Ye Ji versus Ju Huan Zhang. Two Koreans in a final of recurve women is not a surprise for us. And uh, the Korean has been a lot of pressure to, to perform well in the home country. And uh, as soon as they arrive in the final, both Korean, I think, this pressure disappear and they start performing as they used to do. More relaxed, we see their faces are quite relaxed. And we have Jo, who was third in the ranking round, and she was seven Olympic Games trying to get this medal. The end of the second end. Quack had a one-point lead over uh, teammate uh, Ju with 56, but the even Stevens at the end of the third. One arrow left. Very tight score as is usual in a, in a match against Koreans, but also at the same time very high level. And that's it, just uh, one point in it. Ju takes the match, 1-1-3 to 1-1-12. It was very good to see the atmosphere of the spectator. We had 3,000 people uh, cheering, and because they were Koreans, uh, they, they, you could feel the atmosphere and the enjoyment of the, of the audience and the public. Worth mentioning, uh, Juan Carlos, just uh, looking at these slow motion shots of the archers, you can really see how they're, uh, they're aiming and performing. They, they are the reference for all the archers around the world. The technique is perfect, and they prove it competition after competition. It's my first participation in the World Championships. It was a really hard time, but I tried to do my best and it paid off. Right now I can say very much, I'm so proud. That takes us on to the final match in this competition, the individual recurve men's gold match between Im Donghyun of Korea and Lee Chang Hwan of Korea. Im, of course, the world champion in Leipzig. Yes, Im is the second time he arrived in this situation to, to fight for the goal. He, he took out his uh, teammate all who did the world record, so he was in a good shape and very confident to try to get the second gold medal. But Lee was not going to put it easy to him and was getting a good fight. Neither of these archers particularly scoring high. It's uh, eights and nines uh, at the moment with a, with a few tens scattered around. Is the wind uh, a consideration here? Yes, for sure. They have not uh, the pressure to, to try to do well in the country. They both are Koreans. What is true is that uh, they was windy and they were challenging and you can see the groups that are going to left or right. They are grouping well, but the wind is moving them. So Lee takes it, having started the end with just a two-point uh, advantage over his teammate, extends his lead to 113 over 108. Excellent performance from Mr. Lee. Very good. He has been in many competitions and he has not get the medal, so he deserved it. And he has been the second in the ranking round, so we could see that in this competition he was ready since the first uh, day we start shooting. So Mr. Im suffering in the final end, scoring only 26 to Mr. Lee's 29. That's excellent grouping and shooting in the middle of the last arrow. That's the, what the Korean showed is they are different. When they need a 10, they make the 10 and, and they make it as consistent as we have seen right now. So congratulations to Mr. Lee and all of the Korean archers who put on a fantastic show in front of a packed stadium. The Koreans taking the recurve men, recurve women, a silver in the compound women's match and the gold in the men and women team matches, a fantastic exhibition of archery. This was my first international competition and I'm really happy I win here and I get the title, especially with this really tight match against Him dong -yeon. That's it, thank you very much for joining us for the 45th World Outdoor Archery Championships. An excellent competition, Juan Carlos. Fantastic competition and again insisting that we have many countries uh, present. We have medals for the five continents, which prove that archery is growing worldwide. 
So we will see you again in 2011 when we will be in the capable hands of the Italians in Turin. Until then, good shooting.